Hi, good evening. I have to say it is humbling and fantastic to see so many people in the room tonight. Um, Sarah and I had our first meeting in my lounge uh, on the same sofa and, uh, and uh, we discussed you know, basically what were we going to do. We knew that behind the scenes, actually governors at a lot of the feeder schools, Martin, Holy Trinity, Garden Suburb, Brooklyn, had been working for quite a while to draw attention to the lack of acceptable secondary school places in our community. We knew that was going on, but what we really felt was that for far too long, parents, and I think those are you know, great individual stories, parents had felt like they were individuals that they were fighting on their own, that the appeals process was for them to get their child in. But actually, when you look around the room and you hear those stories, you realise there are hundreds of us, you know. I'm always surprised when I get off the tube at East Finchley. I think I'm part of the community, and I think to myself, who are all these people? How many people live here? There are so many people living around N2, NW11, further into N3, you know, I don't know who they are, I think I'm, really, I think I'm really in the thick of it. But clearly, one by one, we all go home and fight these private battles to get our kids into schools. Um, you know, I'd like to really acknowledge that the governors have done an awful lot of work badgering behind the scenes. And I know, and I know Mike and, and Alison will both talk a bit about some of the, the work that is going on behind the scenes. Um, but Sarah and I felt that it was time to crack this open. This couldn't be a private problem anymore. We needed strength in numbers. Um, right, that's great then. I'll sit down, we've done. Um, but so, so, so thank you for being here. So, so what have we done? This is in fact our fourth meeting and they've grown each time. And from it, people are, uh, parents are the most incredible creative people. They have, you know, the, the, the skills and ideas that have come through on the email, it, you know, it certainly keeps me busy. And if anybody here, there's lots of you who have emailed me and Sarah, you get replies at 11, 12 o'clock at night because that's the only time I can get them all out. So, you know, thank you for being such active participants. What have we done? Well, we've had three key elements to our campaign so far. One is media, that's social media. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, um, and we've been spreading the word, trying to get people involved, trying to, to let everybody know what's going on and make people realise that, that this campaign is not going to run without you. You know, we can only do it together. So we've been using the media, and of course we've been using the press. A lot of you may well have seen media articles that we've had, both letters that have gone into the editor, news stories, our flash mobs. We've been trying what we can to get this story out there. Um, in terms of the political process, well, I think the fact that, that Mike and Alison are here tonight is, you know, is testament to the fact that we've been knocking on doors and generally badgering. I'd like to say, making a nuisance, Mike and I tweeting at 11 o'clock at night as well. Um, just, just really because we wanted to make sure that they knew, they're our representatives, this is what we want. So we want them to, to, to support us and, and to make it work. Um, and then the, the third, and I guess one of the most important things, is we've been working in the community, and that's, that's us, that's parents, that's, that's all of you who've turned to your neighbours or turned to somebody in the playground and have said... <coughs> Do you know about the schools? Where's your child going to go to school? Where's your daughter going to school? And so many of those conversations happening um, at East Finchley Festival, at Brooklyn School Fair, at the Littleton Playing Fields event just recently. So many opportunities to engage. And, and once again, thank you for all of those conversations you've had. So that's what we've done so far. That's been about getting everybody together, getting the issue out there. There are four options as far as we can see them. Um, the options are that Christ College becomes a co-ed school. Um, lots of logistical issues with all of these options here. Some are probably more feasible than others. Bishop Douglas, it could become a community school. If those of you who saw the stats going round at the beginning, it's only at 50% of capacity for this coming September. Now, in my books, that means it's not viable. It means people aren't wanting to go there, because if we're all saying there's no school for our child, why aren't we sending them there? That's an obvious one. Um, something new, a free school. You know, there's a lot of talk about free schools. Could that be the option for us? Um, it's certainly something we've explored with Mike. It's, it's something we've talked about as parents as well. Not a lot of room. There's not a lot of space around here. Um, so what we've had to look at is being a bit smart. 
could we perhaps use the free school opportunity to work in partnership with another school? Could we be looking to expand another school and using that as a mechanic to assist us to do so? Can we think big? <coughs> could we federate the six forms, stick them all into the McDonald's building at East Finchley, which of course is going to be empty soon, free up all the space around the secondary schools, but federate them all so that they can offer a great choice of A-levels? What I think is fantastic is, you know, as far as we're concerned, you know, they've got rules to follow. We can think big, we can think creative, and we can tell them what we want. So, so let's not be constrained by bureaucracy. I'm sure they'll pull us into line during the course of it. But let's tell them what we want, because frankly, if we don't shoot for the stars, we're not going to get it, are we? Um, and Henrietta Barnett, a lot of us here tonight are here because we want a community mixed-sex school. Henrietta Barnett is never going to be that for us, we know that. But I wonder if it could alleviate some of the pressure by taking some more local children. What is a free school? <laughs> a free school. Do you want to talk? Yeah, a free school in a nutshell is where uh, either an organisation or a community, usually parents, come together and start up their own school and they're babysitted, babysat, babysitted through the process uh, by the Department for Education. Uh, very flexible on rules in terms of if the council opens a school, lots of rules and regulations about size of classrooms, ratios of uh, staff to pupils, playground space. Free schools have much more relaxed, which is why they can be in rented accommodation, surplus office blocks, much more freedom to get started. And as they get underway, then they start to come slightly more into the normal um, form of a state school. The, the ones operating locally, there's two underway in the borough, um, are being started by pretty much by parents, although the two in the borough are faith-based. Outside of Barnet, they're often just parents who've got together, um, hired a head teacher, and got their own school underway. It's worth saying they're not a simple option. The process, the process, and the vast majority of those that apply, and it's testament this year again have not succeeded. So their plans, their logistics, their, their site development, their child protection policies, their education ethos has, has, has let them down and they've not got through. So in theory, there's a pot of money. You'd need a very strong group of people and at least a year to get it off the ground. So it's, it's not an easy option. But it is an option we should talk about. Sorry, can I just ask, is it, are free schools free or yes. Is it the government, the government. Yeah. Pot of money yeah. yes. for you to start them up? Yes. They're going to use yes. the money that you do the legwork? Yeah. When they say it's free, it means free of local authority control. Right. They are run by the parents. Okay. So those are the options as we saw them. And, uh, you know, some of them are perhaps logistically more easy than others. Uh, but what we asked in preparing for this meeting was that both Mike and Alison addressed those four particular options. They may have a big solution up their sleeves, I don't know. If they're coming along with something <laughs> magic, then you know, we'll be prepared to call it the uh, Alison and Mike Academy. Uh, I can promise you. I can promise you. Um, so, um, I thought five would come down there. <laughs> yes, if we have a whip round, we'll surely make it, certainly. So we've asked them to address those options. And um, I will stop talking. I'm happy to talk at the end. I'm happy to take part in questions. But that's a bit about who we are, how we got here. And now we'll hand over to them. If that's all right? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, um, can I thank you everyone who's emailed me, tweeted me um, on a variety of subjects, but usually about schools. Uh, I do try and answer every email myself. Uh, and as quickly as I can, and I, it is true, I just, just tweet, we tweet each other uh, late at night, and uh, so uh, I do appreciate the fact that you've taken time out to come and uh, tell me your views, although I'm pretty sure I know what they are, because Avis is quite forceful at telling me what the, uh, the views are. Can I just run, first of all, and say this isn't a, a party political issue, Alice and I, we may be from different parties, but on this we are entirely uh, united. Um, we're lucky we actually, as a political adversary, have to get on extremely well together. We did on the council, and we still do. And uh, so, you know, we are at one at trying to solve the issue. There are no easy solutions. 
Um, I won't pretend there's a magic wand which we can wave tonight and you'll have a new primary school because it, it isn't just secondary, it's primary places as well that are in short supply, particularly for N2. If I can just talk about very briefly some of the history as to why we are where we are. First of all, the geography of the borough. Most of the secondary schools in Barnet were, as an accident of geography, built on the borders. In the past, a council could discriminate against its own pupils. It could put them first. And then once they were placed, you could then top up with external pupils. Then I think it was in 84, there was something called the Greenwich decision. Greenwich council was taken to court and were found to be discriminating. And so that rule was scrapped. And basically now it is pretty much geography. And so because of the borders, some of our schools are, have many pupils from Haringey or from Enfield or from Brent, depending on where it is. And that is a problem, particularly in a popular uh, educational authority like Barnet. That is a problem the borough has to, uh, to deal with. The council ex did, as much as it could based on the data it has, um, forecast a growth in school-aged pupils. It, the, the bulge in the secondary uh, was not anticipated to be this early, and actually the bulge in primary came two years before the expected, and geographically, as happened in, a, in N2, when actually the, most of the primary bulge was expected to be around about the A5 corridor and the north, which is why the new primary schools or the rebuilt primary schools have been in that part of the borough. So the council had plans, but it's been taken aback by the shift in demography. Uh, we've all seen as local politicians how they, in my own street, when I moved in, there were no families. Now we've got five families. And so the council is you're having to play catch up. What we've done in, uh, is that we had a debate in, uh, in Parliament. I'm not sure how many of you were uh, so tired and struggling for sleep that you watched it. I know Helen came down. Um, that's actually had quite a positive response and we then followed that up with a meeting with the minister, the schools minister, and I took in uh, the lead member for children, uh, the chief executive and the director of education. And we had a very uh, frank discussion about the issue facing Barnet. One of the problems is that the Department for Education and Civil Servants, and apologise if any of you actually work for the DfE, but the orthodoxy in the Department of Education is that while well, Barnet gets a chunk of capital um, for its maintenance, you should have used that to expand your schools. And that's quite a hard argument to say to them, but if we've got a boiler over here that needs replacing, or that school needs rewiring, you can't not do it to build extra classrooms on that school. And that's been quite a big battle. What we got out of that meeting is two things. First of all, um, we had a commitment from the Minister that his officials would come to Barnet to work with the education team on how we have planned for school places, how the council has spent its money over the last 10, 20 years expanding provision and why it's not been enough. So they can see hard evidence that the council haven't just sat on a pot of money and done nothing, it's basically been a lack of money from the centre. So they can see that the story that Barnet and other London councils because it's not just a Barney problem, it's a problem across London, um, they're not lying, this is a, is a fact. Also, two days ago, the Department for Education announced that they were, they've accepted a report called the James Report, which is what we based our arguments on, is that 60% of primary school shortages, which then feeds into secondary, um, the shortage is in London, but London only got 25% of the available money to address that problem. The Department for Education have accepted that now and they've changed the formula so more money will be coming to London and there's been an announcement, we don't yet know how it's going to be allocated but there now will be a significant boost in hundreds of millions to allow London councils to expand their school provision. So we've had some success um, in terms of persuading the Minister that the James view was accurate. On top of that, a part of the same announcement um, there's another £2 billion pounds now being put on the table um, to expand uh, and refurbish schools. Uh, again, we don't know exactly how that's going to work. It was only announced two days ago. So we've made progress. What we're doing locally um, is that 
we, I've been spectacularly unsuccessful at getting Christ College to engage. Um, I have met um, some of the LEA governors, I know Alison has as well. They regard being a boys' school as being their, you know, their USP, the only community-based boys' school uh, in the borough. And they're not keen. They say, what's in it for us? Because there's no extra money if they take girls. So they don't see the advantage to them. And just being community-spirited didn't seem to appeal uh, to the governing body. Um, so I also wrote to the chairman of governors saying, can we meet to really thrash this out? I've not even had a response to my letter. Um, simply, they're, not, they're ignoring the campaign, and I know they've ignored Alison and ignoring me. In terms of Henrietta Barnett, behind the scenes, we're starting to see a bit of a shift. Um, I've discussed priority, post, uh, priority postcodes to say, can you allocate 20% of your places to girls in N2 who meet your educational criteria so you don't water down the educational achievement? They have been, they're a bit wary of that because they guard the educational achievement quite fiercely, which is fair enough. So what we're now talking about, and I think we're getting some, getting some headway, is that they restrict uh, places to those who can travel to the school within, say, 45 minutes. Now, that still sounds like a long time, but actually a lot of girls travel up to an hour and a half to get to the school. Now, that's not a perfect solution, but it would release some places locally. Not a, a magic wand, but it relieves just a bit of pressure. So that's a bit of good news. Not a done deal, but we're getting a fair hearing. The next bit is that um, there are two bits that the council are working on. The rules on cross-border uh, funding amongst councils have been relaxed. So in the past, if Barnes has wanted to expand a local school, it's had to fund it itself. So... If Barnett said to uh, Harringay, why don't we expand Fortismere, Fortismere, you know, Harringay would say, you know, get lost, it's our school. What we're now finding, and, and the Director of Education confirmed today, he's talking to Harringay about, can Barnet help fund Harringay with pool resources for Fortismere to expand, because it's got land. So they're now actively talking about cooperation on funding an expansion programme. Same also down in Highgate Primary, which had capacity and still has, and again, could Barnet contribute to that school taking on a form of entry which would feed into that bottom end of N2. So some practical steps up both primary and secondary. Not a magic solution, but will ease pressure. The biggest solution would be for Bishop Douglas to become a community, non-denominational school. All I can say is that uh, the council are very well aware of the problem. They would like that solution too, but it is not a council school, and they can't march in and take the keys off the diocese, as much as they might like to. Um, all Alison and I can say, because we all, we, <coughs> Alison's got scars on her back when she was a lead, lead member for education. The diocese are very, very difficult to deal with. And if loose talk costs schools, shall we say, so all I can tell you is the council are in discussions with the diocese about how the school could best meet community needs. And let's just put it at that. But I don't want to say more because negotiations and all these things are very delicate. And if the diocese felt that the council announced, oh, by the way, for Monday, Bishop Douglas is going to be a council school, they'll say, oh, no, it's not, and pull the shutters down. They know they've got a problem at Bishop Douglas. They know it's not supported. They know it's half empty. What we've got to do with them is gently nudge them towards a solution which we're happy with. And beyond that, I can't really speak. That's, so that's where we're up to. The challenge of speaking second is uh, is obviously you, you miss some of the lines. bits. No, <laughs> not quite. It's not quite. But I mean, <clears throat> start off by saying um, I know because I'm now sort of pseudo grandmother, but I know from my experience as a counsellor over the last uh, 12 or 15 years that it's one of the biggest choices that you will make for your children, and that it is one of the, it's one of the most important things you can you can do for your children. So I. I've sat in, in surgery many, many times with parents discussing school place issues, both at primary and secondary level, and, and, and I am in no doubt about the importance of that. I'm also in no doubt, while I know that a lot of parents across Borough of Barnet 
for seeking faith places. I'm also very clear that the choice of a non-faith school is just as, as valid and important a choice. And I'm an East Finchley Ward councillor, and I know that from the people I talk to all the time, every day. And so one of the things that I've been very conscious of saying is choice means real choice, and that's about every kind of school. We have in Barnet an, a really rich mix of secondary schools, and, and, and Mike's touched on that. We have faith schools, single-sex schools, selective schools, and, 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 um, and, and ordinary community co-ed schools. And it makes admissions a really tough tough um, place to be sometimes. And I say that because, as Mike alluded, 10 years ago I was the Cabinet Member for Education. I do have scars on my heart and my back um, because it was a really tough time and actually there was a really big challenge through Finchley and East Finchley at that stage for all girls places. People were looking specifically for all girls places. And so I know some of the arguments in the reverse in a sense from Christ College because we talked about Christ College, we talked about having additional all girls places. And one of the battles was no, Christ College is the only school, community school, that takes just boys. And that's important in equalities terms to maintain that. So there is a real challenge. I argued very hard with officers about the balance of that. But it, it's, it's, it's a long-standing argument about that. And Christ College have been incredibly resistant, though the sixth form is partially mixed. They are very keen, as Mike describes it, they're USP, they are a boys' school, that's part of who they are. And they're not really prepared to talk about it. Um, I've had a brief conversation informally with the Chair of Governors because we happen to be in an event together, but I know from history that it's a challenge. Um, my partner was Chair of Governors ten years ago, and so I've, I've, I've seen it from the inside as well. So it's been a chronic problem. I think um, changes in Fry and Barnet School over the last, uh, in the interim period, the, the, the uh, reopening of, uh, of Christchurch as the Wren has made an enormous difference. But that, again, was a battle with the diocese ten years ago that was a very difficult one. So there's, there's a long-standing issue. On top of that, we've got this bulge that is turning into a trend um, for additional for primary school places. Mike alluded to that. The figures are there's a call for 70,000 70, primary school places across London over the next 40 years, additional to what's already there. That's the call. And that's why the Jane's report outcome is so important that that is being recognised. London councils, the leaders of councils across London have been fighting that one really hard. And so that is actually a really important thing to, to come. So we've got an immediate challenge because of the individual local issues, we've got a medium-term challenge about responding to that, that primary school bulge that's coming through. And actually, we have a longer-term challenge of making sure that the secondary school places in Barnet are the right places in the right places, because the borough is changing um, and there are demographic changes. And I think one of the challenges actually has been about the data. I was about, I'll, I'll talk about you know, who I've talked to about this, but one of the people is the chief executive, who is very clear that while they haven't been caught on the hop about the primary school places, the data wasn't telling them the right things, and the same is happening about secondary school places and so he's very conscious it's one of the reasons I wanted to make sure that it was in the discussion because it's really important that they plan in the longer term but for you it's an immediate and a medium term um, challenge um, so my experience over 10 years tells me that we should be fighting together we've had our battles and our jousting over the past in the past about it um, but actually, it's a, it, it's a problem that we all need to get right, and it has to be cross-party, and we need to all use the levers we can use within the process at different levels. And there's your energy and your passion that is illuminating this campaign in a way that wasn't happening 10 years ago. I was seeing individual parents or 20 parents at a time. This is fantastic because the passion that comes behind this campaign really puts it on the map and on the agenda and allows both Mike and I, in our different ways and at our different levels, and Andrew Harper as well as the Cabinet member, to, um, to voice and have that impetus behind us in, in asking what we're asking. Um, so I've talked to the Chief Executive, I've talked to Andrew Harper a number of times um, privately, and, uh, and Mike and I have, have been talking about it, um, and, and throwing around ideas. I've touched on Christ College. Um, Bishop Douglas, great. It's a school, I mean, personally, we spent a lot of money on it eight or ten years ago. I'm very proud of some of the facilities that went in because they were hard fought, and I would love to see those open to a wider number of young people within Barnet, actually, and particularly within East, the East Finchley area. Um, we can't spook the horses, but I hope some of the, that discussion will be fruitful. In terms of something new, there are lots of really brilliant blue sky ideas um, around. Um, ten years ago, I was looking for a site for a secondary school, and, and I, you know, 
We've now got a, uh, a new hospital on the site that I was bidding for. Um, but it's, that's a tough deal. It's a lot of money and a big site. So actually some of the creative ideas might well be, um, be fruitful. Six forms are a great idea. Again, we did look at that one, but actually there's some real impetus there. Henrietta Barnett, priority postcodes, they used to be in their admissions criteria, but actually it's become such a popular and competitive school that those have been wiped out. 30 years ago, there was a priority for people in N2, N3 and N12. It doesn't happen anymore. I'm not entirely sure how uh, my, uh, um, St. Michael's manage it, but they name parishes, I think. <laughs> oh, yes, and NWL. And NWL. <laughs> but I was thinking particularly of the postcodes that we're dealing with. They were named within the admissions criteria. And we are in NWL. Uh, and we're in NWL 11 here. Um, N2, N3, N10. Um, and you're not N dealing with NWL. And, but they were they were part and parcel of the. They, no, no, it's not that I'm not dealing with it. But they were they were a given because it's your lo it's your nearest school. Were you to be on geographical criteria? Just checking because we've had N two and N three. No, apologies. It's because I'm an East Finchley councillor and because many of the parents have come to me. No, absolutely, it's about local schools within this this key area, um, the south of the borough. Um, you know, the South East of the or whatever, this area within the community that is East Finchley um, and, and Garden Suburb. But actually there are also some challenges through, through the Golders Green area and up into the Lower Finchley area as well, because actually um, I'm sure, I know we have people from Moss Hall um, coming tonight, um, and, and there are issues up into the Finchley area as well, and that's certainly a reflection of the problem 10 years ago. Um, so no, I'm not excluding NW11, I promise. They, but they were just given postcodes at the time. <laughs> Pardon? But, uh, why there, there's children from another place, not children from East Finchley or... Because it's a selective here. school and, it, and its criteria, at the top criterion is success in their exam, in, in the entrance exam. Yes. And so, Bishop, Bishop Douglas. Uh, Bishop, Douglas. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Douglas, because it's, um, because it's a church school, and its admissions criteria have the top criterion is a religious one, and then the geographical, uh, whether you're a Roman Catholic, sorry, um, and, and the same would be true for a Church of England school, for a Church of England, those who have, have faith. And so families who want a Catholic school in that case, but who come from outside um, the local area, have access because there are fewer local parents of Catholic faith who want to go to the school. And that criterion takes precedence over the geographical one. And it, it's been a challenge over the last 10 or 15 years, as the school has lost some popularity, progressively lost popularity with the local community. We've got two Catholic primary schools within easy walking distance of Bishop Douglas, but parents aren't, are often not send, choosing to send their children there. And so, in a sense, it's a school that's out of step with its local demography and local parental choice. And therefore, it's not filling. And that's a waste of both school places and, and, and good facilities, actually. Um, and then finally, um, you, there was the issue about um, whether other schools might prioritise the area. And I understand Compton School have been looking um, specifically to, uh, to, um, to enable themselves to prioritise N N2 as a postcode because actually there are parents for whom that is their nearest, pri nearest primary school. So there are schools who have been discussing, secondary schools that have been discussing that. So there's a lot in this. There are a lot of reasons why there, there are challenges uh, De geographic, um, uh, dem demographic, and the spread of the schools. As the first speaker said four schools within within easy walking distance, and your your child has doesn't have access to any of them, and that is crackers. It makes a mockery of the issue about choice for, for parents, and actually lots of parents and lots of children just want to move into secondary school with their peers. Quite right too. Others parents have a perfectly justifiable choice to have a different kind of school somewhere else and travel further for that. But this is your local area. So, what we were looking at the end of these discussions about what I could, what we could actually do to enhance and bring an, an additional set of, um, of, of impetus to the to the to the um, to the campaign. And the council is made up of two sets of councillors. One of the cabinet councillors, the ten who make formal dis executive decisions. And then the rest of the council form essentially the scrutiny body. And um, I chose to, see, to secure a scrutiny panel, a cross-party body, um, that is going to look specifically at the school place issue, secondary school places. And the way we crafted the terms of reference were specifically about this area, 
but also in the wider generalisation of secondary school places across across the south and the east of the borough, so that we're, we're, we're broadening that out slightly. But the impetus comes from this local community um, in NW11, N2. Um, and that allows us to be cross-party, to get the debate out into public. It's a panel that will meet in public.